because that's normally not the case. And he struck him out. Wait a minute. I thought Gabe Morales pointed at Goldschmidt. Oh, okay. Wow, I thought, he I went thought the home plate umpire pointed at Goldschmidt to say he swung at it, but I guess he was pointing at first on appeal, and Trip Gibson said he held up. Wow, and he's just ejected Joe. Joe walked out of the dugout, threw his arms up as if to say, what's going on here? And he immediately got ejected by Trip Gibson. Looked like Joe was saying it was a full swing. <laughs> Now he's going to get his money's worth. It's a bunch of cods wallop is what this is. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be the best look, but it sure looked like he yeah, went you around. Know, yeah, it, 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 my, you know, in real time, yes. I, think, I, I think that's a swing. I mean, he, he keeps his hands out in front. And Joe having a conversation with Hunter Wendelstadt. He's the uh, crew chief. Well, don't forget about Goldschmidt over there at first base. Mm -hmm. Big slugger, but he can run. So Joe telling Dave Martinez that he has to go out. There's Manny. And he's drilled, and Manny's going after him. And here we go. And Manny and Ventura are going at it on the mound. And this is a big-time brawl at Camden Yards. He threw at Manny in the second inning. And on the first pitch, he drills him, and that's the M.O. of your Donald Ventura. This has followed him in his brief career. Manny and Ventura still barking at each other, and Manny is being pulled away by C.B. Buckner. Now I got to tell you, Mike, that is just Bush League. That is Bush League. Well... A little old school here. Oh, Manny looking back after 98 mile an hour fastball knocks him off the plate. Ventura taking note. All right, Manny, take this one. And then it was on. The Royals kind of set the tone last year. A bunch of early season bench clears. Take an exception. So Manny reacting to being hit, and of course, quite often the retaliator gets in more trouble than the instigator. And we'll see what the umpires do here. Second time in this game, Ventura is thrown at Machado. This time it hit him. I didn't get a chance to look at the home plate umpire, Manny Gonzalez, whether or not it was an immediate ejection or not from Ventura. Well, Ventura is on the bench, Machado is on the bench. Dave Hyland, the pitching coach, talking with Ventura. Fielding Culbreth in the center there. He's the crew chief. Well, the umpiring crew definitely has to go through and find out how many guys were involved here before they start kicking players out of the game. And one thing uh, you don't want to see, two of the bright young stars in the game, Doing this doesn't look too good for either team. Well, Odor 
they've got eight games reduced to seven for landing a punch on Jose Bautista. And if the Orioles lose Machado for a week with Hardy out, that'll be a major loss. I guess the good news, both teams just wanted to pull two, the two apart. There weren't any extra punches thrown. I'm sure waiting there. There we go. Ooh, got it. Big bodies rolling around in there. The risk of injury, uh, unbelievably high. Sometimes in competition, these type of things happen. You know that the Orioles don't like to see Manny in scuffles like that. This team's uh, bright young star, and really would be the face of the franchise one day. This all goes back to the second inning when Manny batted after an RBI single in his first at bat. Yeah, big first inning when the Orioles put four runs on the board, and then he got brushed back with a pitch. Up and in fastball, but Manny letting him know. And now some words exchanged, and he stayed in the box to admire it. Fortunately, not a home run, and then this last at bat right here. Takes it in the backside, and Manny went out to get him. Says, uh, you know, 98 doesn't feel too good. He lets him know. So, pitcher's going to have to come in. Ventura obviously has been ejected. He's on the bench. Last year Ventura was suspended seven games for throwing at hitters that was against the White Sox where they had a home and home where Ventura threw at them in Kansas City and then did it again in Chicago and he was given a seven game suspension. All right, Ventura definitely a track record. And I can't remember anything in the past with he and Manny. But the past starts today. And uh, Manny took exception to being brushed back with 98 earlier in the ball game. So now. Well, Now we see Ventura still on the bench. We don't know as of yet until they make the announcement in the press level here if he's been ejected. If he has been, he's supposed to leave the bench, and the umpires either haven't noticed or maybe haven't ejected him. But Chen Ming Wang is going to come on, and he'll have as long as he needs to get loose. We did see Manny go down below towards the clubhouse on the Orioles side. So the umpires did call the managers to home plate and they explained to each what their action is following that. And now it looks like Ventura is going to leave. To hit and really drive it hard for a guy like Brandon. That's not what you want. That's the first strikeout for Matt Moore, two down. Brandon Drew saying he fouled that ball. Uh, here comes Kevin Cash to have a word with Mark Ripperger. And again, this type of thing still is not subject to review. It's up to the plate umpire. He can't ask for a help if he wants. I think that's what Kevin Cash is trying to get him to do. And Ripperger will get help. The use of the determining factor on uh, the foul balls at home plate is what you can hear. Certainly where Mark Ripperger is, he can't see if there was contact made, but he might be able to hear it. Got at least one and likely two people right in front of him. Let's have a listen. Do you hear the bat hit the baseball? I hear ground and glove. Yeah. Baseball hitting the ground and then into Conger's glove. I didn't hear any contact with the bat that time. And I don't really know how any of the base umpires could have had a better look at it. 
Erwin Danley, the crew chief, is the gentleman on the left there. He's got first base today. While they're sorting this out, I want to let the fans know that when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price. Online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code D-backs50 at PapaJohns.com. Well, they rule it a strikeout. It looks like that's the correct call, but Chip Hale would like an explanation. Now I'm going to guess that Chip is saying, wait a minute, you had it as a foul when you were right there. Yeah. You're standing three feet away from it. Everybody else is standing 100 feet or more away from that play. You can see Chip saying, you're right there. This is something you just don't see in the game anymore with the challenge system in effect. A, a manager coming out of the dugout to argue. And you know what? Chip is pushing back on this a little harder than we normally see. Now he wants to check in with Kerwin Danley, the crew chief, who likely had the most help from first base, and he'd like an explanation from Danley. Uh, it, he looks like he's on a mission here, Bob Chip Hill. Could be a purpose to this argument that he's having with a couple of the umpires out there. It's been known to happen in the past when the, to get your team fired up, a manager will go out there and take one for the ball club. I mean, you know, it's a big situation. He'd like Brandon to be up there with runners in the corners in a scoreless game, get that first run across. But uh, Chip is pushing back pretty hard right here. Generally there's sort of like a, a an hourglass right there's a certain amount of time you're going to get and then you're going to overstay your welcome. We believe that. The call was correct. That's what our looks are telling us and sure enough Chip Hale has been ejected. Wouldn't be surprised if that was the goal, but that's just, of course, speculation. But he is gone. I mean, the Diamondbacks come into tonight 9 and 21 at home, trying to get something going here. And the manager will leave early. Pirates have a 5-3 lead, but Alan Porter ejecting Matt Joyce to end the inning after he was called out on strikes. Joyce caught looking to end the frame. And it is a strike. And here's Matt uh, discussing this with Alan Porter, and the discussion ends well. Doesn't end right there, but the conversation continues. It was very, very uh, quickly right after that strike call that Joyce was ejected. So it wasn't like he went on this long tirade. Now I don't know what he said exactly, but didn't uh, take much. Didn't take much. Strike three call. Posey and Garen were moving to the dugout before the call even. Turner didn't like it. Well, look at the last pitch of the last half inning. Corey Garrett freezing Justin Turner with what was called strike three called on the outside corner. Turner did not agree. And Turner got tossed for his trouble. Well that's why Corey Garrett has been so effective. Oh boy. That was out of the zone. It was really close. Watch where the five appears. Well, the glowing circle. The top of it could have been argued. And now an ejection. Robin Ventura does not like the call from the plate umpire Carlson. Robin's going after him. And 
for your amateur lip readers. What Robin said is, I thought those were close enough to be called. And Mark said, well, you know, I looked at it from a few different angles and don't agree with you exactly. So Robin given the boot. Just misses three and two. Jake wanted that pitch. That pitch has been a strike and it has not been a strike. And look at this great location. You can see Fox track liked it. And oh, again, it does not. what's he have to do, he says. And Meals takes his mask off. Jake was going to be out of the game either way. He might get ejected. He's going to. He just got, to got tossed. Jake was coming out of the game either way, and he was not happy with either the 2 2 pitch or the 3 2 pitch. And Dwayne, to be fair, it has been an inconsistent zone tonight. It has been very inconsistent. You can understand Jake's frustration. He threw two consecutive strike threes there and didn't get the call from Meals. And this one was better than the prior one. Oh my goodness. That's a that's a perfect pitch. He's right over that pitch. I know. He's set up on the inside corner. And you can't blame Oda Rizzi. Here it is. Look, it's right in front of the umpire. That's a shame. That's a, I mean, if the Rays come back and win, Jake gets a no decision, but Jake really deserved to get through that sixth inning. Instead he leaves with two outs. Rendon caught looking again. He's been thrown out by Bob Davidson. Now the dugout voicing displeasure. Dusty coming out. Dale Scott comes in, arms folded, crew chief. Well, you should have saw the reaction of the Nats dugout. Zimmerman, Murphy, Harper, Robinson, all almost falling over the rail, arguing the call. They're going nuts. And Bob Davidson's been hearing it from both dugouts today. Dusty getting his money's worth here. Bear down, I think the last two words were. Absolutely. It's the bottom of the 12th. These guys have been playing for a long time. What do you got on pitch track? Well, the Cubs broadcasters are calling it a perfect pitch. You hardly ever see that reaction from Anthony. He didn't say a word though. That's all he did was throw his arms in the air. I think that's why the dugout went nuts. Maybe not so much by the pitch. He didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. Caught myself there. I tried to almost said exactly what he said. Well, guys, let's take a look back at what took place moments ago between innings. Well, on the pickoff move, the, the Braves came out and wanted to argue the fact they thought it was probably a box. That's Terry Pendleton, the bench coach, along with manager Brian Snicker. I think, I think TP might be done for the night. I think so. Darnell is running first move, and Matts will react to his move. The leg goes up, and then he'll step over there. The question is, did he step too far to the plate? I did not think he did. I think he was going to first anyway. Curtis Granderson. Flies out to Marquecas in right. I will say it was an awkward move. Yeah, but watch. Most left-handers, they look at you and go home. He looks down. That's the fake. I'm going to come over. He was doing that anyway. So I think he was coming. Now, he may have balked. He may not have. But I, I think he'd already made it. Most left-handed pitchers, I would say 99% of the time, have their mind made up that they are going to first before the play starts. Now the 3 2. He got it. Strike three. And then Maven got a beef a little bit now with Gabe Morales. Kevin Maven. 
got kicked bit, out. Uh, yeah, a little bit too much with Gabe Morales been thrown out of the game. Here comes Brad Osmus. Well, that's the last thing the Tigers need here. And yeah, they're already short. Maben uh, was unimpressed with that last call. You could tell head down he was beefing with him, but must have said the magic words. So he's been ejected. It was a strike. Too close to take with two strikes. Ag went through his shin guard rather before the tag was applied. And the verdict is in. They say he's out. That is absolutely bogus. Absolutely. And so Brian Snitker wants a confirmation. The Braves dugout explodes and somebody might have been run. Brian Snitker wants to understand what's going on. He might have been thrown out of the game. Yep, he has been. Folks, I don't know who they threw out in the dugout. Might have been Bonifacio. I couldn't tell, but that was horrible. <laughs> oh, don't take a pitch down in the zone tonight. This strike zone by Toby Basner consistently calling the low strike and Brian Price barking from the dugout. Now that's the one thing, of course, we've said it before. You see from the dugout is north and south. So when you think you get a pitch that's way down in the zone. And Brian Price is going to come out and talk to Basner. I think he and got I think he's going to get his money worth. Money's worth. Basner had had enough. Price has been tossing. He is indeed getting his money's worth. Five batters have been rung up on called third strike so far. You know, Joey Votto, I think, is in the dugout chirping, or somebody is in the dugout chirping a little bit too, because it looks like Tom Hallion, who's the crew chief for the first base umpire, has come over to the dugout and he's looking in. Riggleman kind of is going to get him out of the way, as is Zach Cozart. Toby Basner getting an earful from manager Brian Price and now crew chief Tom Howie and Milwaukee back to the dugout. Chirping, chirping, chirping. Basner gives him the stare. Basner hears enough and tosses him out of the game and here comes Price. You know, it's the only circumstance now where you see or one of the only circumstances where you see a manager get ejected from the game. Yeah. Would have got strike two with. That's strike three, and the ball goes over in the dugout. And now they're going to ask whether it was a foul tip. And Barney goes to first. There's no sign yet. Now the umpires are going to have a conference as to whether or if it was a foul tip. Gabe Morales never indicated that it was a foul ball. Now he's calling on the other three umpires. See if anybody had a foul tip, and this could be a real beef here. Yeah. The catcher didn't move. The batter didn't move. The pitcher didn't move. I don't know how Barney could have made contact with that pitch. It was in the dirt, so far out in front of home. Watch this swing here. Another breaking ball, curve ball. He did foul tip. From that one angle that we just saw, it looked like a foul ball. Now Gibbons has been thrown out by Ted Barrett, the third base umpire. And I could feel it was going to be a beef mm -hmm. one side or the other. 
his argument might be there was no there was no sign that it was a foul ball so now why are you calling it a foul ball just because the other manager and came out and asked for it Ted Barrett is the crew chief for this umpiring crew. Robin Ventura came out and argued that it was a foul tip. Nobody went after it. Barney didn't run initially until he saw the ball way over by the thing. Yeah, David Robertson, the pitcher, sprinted off the mound, thinking that nobody touched the watcher. No sign, nothing. Now here comes Robertson because he hasn't heard anything. Like, Usually, a, a umpire will say foul tip or not. He doesn't say anything. But that replay shows that it clearly was tipped by Barney. Rivers down 6 3. 1 2 pitch here to O'Malley. And Carlos Turk said he did go. Scott Service wants him to get some help. Throwing Scott Service out. First time Scott Service has been run. And he's just asking a simple question. Why aren't you asking for help? Because he hesitated. He, he waited for a while and then he made the call on Sean. And I think if you have to wait at all, if there's any doubt, it takes a second just to ask for some help. Yeah, I mean, we plan on pride for it. Just to get it right. It takes two seconds. You got. And you got a team out there. What the heck? Now uh, you, you, you can see how long it took him. Prior, the catcher was already picking up the ball before he ended up making the call. First time Scott Service has been thrown out of a ball game. And really unhappy and gets tossed out of the game, slamming his bat down, feeling that Conroy missed two pitches in the at bat, and Andrew McCutcheon is done for the night. Moments ago, at the end of the bottom of the seventh inning, Casey Fiend throwing this pitch to Andrew McCutcheon, which did appear to be low. The second pitch in the at bat that McCutcheon had a problem with, and after strike three called, he slammed his bat down at the plate right away. And Andrew McCutcheon, you don't see this kind of anger from him very often, steamed and gone. Nice hit by Adams. And I'm not sure if the Royals have lost communication in their dugout. But Ned Yost was. Yeah, there's it was okay. uh, somebody somebody chirping in there. Fizz. There, nope. there, uh, there's some chirping going on. Yeah, I just saw Ned go to his head with look like he had a headset on. Well, they've already go. come up with a result. He's out. out. OK. That was so close. Uh oh, somebody got thrown out. Absolutely. Was... Oh, somebody just threw their bat, batting helmet on the field. Jeff Francoeur hasn't even played in this series. Why would he be yelling at Hunter Wendelstad? It's not his call, it's the replay guy in New York that makes the decision. I can understand your frustration, but. And you're not allowed to argue, you know, the call once it's made. It's done. What's done is done. It's frustration. He's sitting there. He was watching it on his scoreboard thinking, hey, he was safe. <laughs> and if you're a good lip, re lip reader, yeah, he, you know what he said. Yeah. Something about horses and what they do. And he'll be tested tomorrow night when he makes his fifth. Major League start right here in Seattle. As Matt Joyce leads off, down two. This second time around, and now 
Ben May, the home plate umpire, says, knock it off. I've heard enough. And somebody just got tossed. Yep. Don't know if it was Clint Hurdle. It's possible it was someone else on that bench. But Clint Hurdle now will give Ben May an earful. And as a Joyce did not like the initial call, Clint Hurdle was notably frustrated on the homestand with the umpiring crews against the Giants and the Los Angeles Dodgers. And now Hurdle gets tossed. So somebody else on the bench had been ejected previously. And Ben May gives him the heave ho. We'll find out who on the Pirates bench had been ejected initially. Might be Jeff Branson, the hitting coach. Yeah, it could be. I saw him walking down from the railing. And right behind him is the major league leader in home runs. As he rolls that one, did he get it in fair territory? Yes, in time. Throws it away. One run scores. Here comes another, and out at the plate is Scope. No, they're calling him safe now. I wonder if he hit home plate. So Friedrich making a good play, getting the ball before it kicked foul, but in short distance, he handcuffed Myers with his throw. And to the moment, two more runs have scored. And Andy Green doesn't have a challenge. He's already used it. Yeah, a couple of things here. Being left-handed, he's got to field it and then spin all the way around. Now, the runner, you know, it looked like he was out of the running lane. Well, that could be an argument. Yeah, I think he was out. It's right on the line. Fair ball. Now, watch where the runner is. He's out of the lane yes, right he there. Is. Davis was out of the running lane. He was on the fair side. Of that chalk line and this very close but scope touches home plate with the hand Derek Norris misses with the tag good slide. So at the moment two runs have scored to make it six to nothing no RBI they're going to rule out an error all the way. And he's got a legitimate gripe here because as we saw in the replay. Watch when Davis is about maybe 10 feet from the back. He goes inside the line there see. He bellied into fair territory. Now does the ball hit Davis at all? That would have. Right there. Foot is fair on the other side of the line. Other foot is fair on the inside part of the line. Does he the is... ball change direction there? Do you think it clipped him on the left shoulder? If it did, then he should be out because he's left the, you know, the first base umpire. That's his call. He left that three foot lane. See if it hit him a closer look. No, it looks like it uh, passed cleanly. Just a matter of a, a fastball from a short distance, and Green is picking up emotionally here on his argument that he has been tossed. It'll be the second time the young manager has been ejected this season. And he's fighting for a couple of runs here. That's a very big call in the game. Mm -hmm. If he's out for running outside that lane, then the inning's over and it's still 4 nothing. Bill Miller is the crew chief. Green getting his money's worth. It's another reason to stay with us after the game. We'll hear from Andy Green in his post game uh, commentary and he'll get, give us a full report on just exactly how he saw it and what happened. Oh, he's not, uh, he's not through yet. Yeah. Oh, now he's really going at it. it <laughs> looks like Miller is saying, why don't you come out here and call it? Mark McGuire going to go out and salvage anything uh, serious happening. Appearances in this series so far. Down on strikes. Fourth strikeout for Junior Guerra. And the first out of the fourth inning. Dave Roberts. He 
Adrian Gonzalez didn't really like the swing he made, but then he took a glance down at the third base and he thought maybe it was catcher's interference. I'm not sure. And all of a sudden he waved to Dave Roberts. Kind of like, oh, don't worry about it, Skip. The third base umpire looked like he took had a problem with that. Third base umpire Dan Bolino. This is the check swing two pitches ago that Adrian might have had a gripe on. But it was a very quick hook and very sensitive. Adrian is not one to show up umpires, and I don't think he was showing up anybody right there. I think he was actually kind of having a body language discussion with Dave Roberts as he walked to the bench. Like, did you think I swung? And Dave's like, well, I don't know. And he's like, I didn't think I swung. And just the hands. The body language, I guess, gets him thrown out. If Gonzalez has been ejected, that means Van Slyke comes into the game, and you're looking at one bench player. When it rains, it pours. I don't understand how you get thrown out on that one. Just give free passes either. Two on, two out for Echeverria. Ball one. And Flowers is really upset. He's really fighting for his pitcher. And he just got thrown out of the game with two outs in the ninth inning. That's been boiling all night. Well now 39 year old A.J. Brzezinski is going to have to do a little stretching and get loose something he didn't anticipate having to do five minutes ago. Yeah, no kid. Can't argue balls and strikes that's cause for immediate ejection. Larry Vanover obliged to Tyler Flowers. And we will have a delay as A.J. Brzezinski is going to have to strap on the gear and get ready and come in. Remember the Braves have already used Brandon Snyder. He's the emergency catcher for Atlanta. At first base he is both teams went in the dugouts. And Mike Matheny, I think, is going to go ballistic here. It's supposed to be within 30 seconds, the manager coming out whether or not to make the challenge. Both teams were off the field. When we saw the replay going to break. We knew that he was safe. But you, as you said, both teams were in the dugout. I don't blame Mike Matheny for being upset one bit. No, and. Maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing for him to have a good old fashioned argument right here and hopefully spear his team up a little bit. They need something. We both said during the break he's going to get tossed. We both thought that the runner was safe. And this is what I miss in baseball. So full count now. And 
the pitch. And a cutter strike. Three called. And now Encarnacion is fuming. And he got tossed out of the game. And now he inadvertently bumped Carapaza as well. A pitch that certainly appeared to be outside. Again, a bit of a late call. And now John Gibbons gets tossed out. Well, Vic Carapaza called Donaldson out on a high fastball. That looked like it was a breaking ball off the plate. Edwin's got a terrific eye, and he's been taking a lot of borderline pitches. And he got tossed very quickly by Vic Carapaza here in the first inning. This ball appears to be a breaking ball off the plate. And Carapaza calls him out. Edwin doesn't react strongly very often, but he's tossed in the first. So not the way the Blue Jays wanted to get this holiday started. Scoreless at the end of one and two people tossed out. There he goes. On the appeal he went around and Martin strikes out. As Martin just gets tossed out of the game. You knew eventually this had a chance to happen with the way things have gone all afternoon. Martin is incensed. A big ovation for Martin but he's out of the game. Josh Tolley's going to have to come in and play. As the ball game moves on to the 14th. Well, we are back. Uh, Chip Hale's night is over. Ejected by plate umpire Brian Knight between innings after a horrific called strike three on Chris Herman. And Brian Knight just stood there, stared at the dugout. And eventually, Chip got a run. Then Chip came out and made sure he got his money's worth. You know, that's kind of a misnomer because when you go out there and argue, you end up paying more. Do you? Yeah. Oh. And once again, the guy that missed the call to start the whole controversy is still in the game. So Rude. Glenn, Glenn Rude. Sherlock, the bench coach, will take over and Chip will watch the rest of the game on TV. His second ejection this year and the fourth of his career. Several factors have gone into that, of course. I was behind Gaddis. All right, now we got a warning. That was retaliation. Oh, you got for Abreu being hit. So now both teams are warned. The White Sox got their shot of retaliating, and AJ Hinch is out there right in the home plate umpire's face. Ryan Blackney, and you know he could have been tossed because it was rather intentional, right? So it doesn't have to be a warning. It could be an ejection. That's up to the umpire to decide. AJ's hot too. And. Yeah, there's a, there's yeah. a difference in these two locations. That's right. One is clearly intentional. One, like Chris Davinsky was not trying to hit a Brayu, in my opinion. Yeah, this was behind Gaddis, so obviously intentional. The other one was not so obvious. Abreu thought it was. Abreu wasn't happy, and I, I wouldn't be happy about getting drilled like that either. But I, I think you'd have to ask yourself, was it intentional? Probably not. Do the Astros want another base runner on? I'll tell you what, that lit AJ right up. Oh, you know it. Well, you know, in, in the baseball thought process, you throw a ball behind a hitter. That is so dangerous because his natural tendency is to move back. So right into the baseball. If you throw it at him, he has a chance to move back and get out of the way. May I say Mike Everett as we watch that pitch that missed just a bit. Mike Everett the first base umpire crew chief did a really nice job in settling things down with AJ. Now two and oh. It to Sam Holbrook and someone's been ejected. I think it's Clint Hurdle. Clint Hurdle has uh, someone from the Pirates uh, dugout had been yelling at Sam Holbrook about the strike zone. Those pitches were both inside it by a good amount according to pitch effects. And even though both teams have uh, had a problem with Sam Holbrook. Tonight, I don't think uh, we've seen much outside uh, 
what's been correct from Holbrook. Yeah, I think he's been pretty good behind the plate. I mean, it hasn't been a major ordeal. We've seen games both uh, with the Pirates and games you watch on TV where there's been issues with umpires. On Twitter. The 3-0 to Ross is a strong 3-0 Leo. Leo. Okay, not sure. Okay, let me put my pad back on. And Davis not really arguing uh, because maybe he wants to get a chance to swing here on three one if they challenge him. You know, Lackey's up next. He's got a base open. He's been pitching cautiously throughout here. And Jerry Meals and Joel Madden and Joel's out. That's for arguing balls and strikes. Time to get your money's worth. He will. Yeah, and uh, you know. I think it's a heat of the moment situation but you could also see where it might have been premeditated given the way this game has started. Cubs uh, down four already. Crowd taken out of the game. I think some replay we don't get to see uh, this very often. Uh, yeah, this crowd was unusually quiet yeah. here early on. For obvious reasons, the Cubs down big. The judge just said, I just asked him where the pitch was. I just want to know where the pitch was. And Beals obviously wouldn't answer him. Second ejection this year for Joe, June 5th against Arizona. He was given the thumb by first base umpire Trip Gibson for arguing a check swing. will manage the team the rest of the day. Roller toward third base. He'll go to second and safe there. They're calling it a fair ball. Oh my goodness and Cabrera never left the batter's box. And here comes Brad Osmus. Kinsler was safe at second but Cabrera is called out at first base. He never left the batter's box. Miggy saying that ball hit his foot. That ball clearly went off Miguel's shin. This would be a good look. I don't know, you think so? Well, the, the last look for sure looked like he hit off his shin. That first look. The umpires are going to convene now. Let's see if anybody had a better look at it. Although I can't imagine somebody 90 feet away would have a better look than Jordan Baker. And I can't imagine Miguel Cabrera not running out of ground ball. Right. That and is it, not part of his M.O. That, that's true. He plays the game the right way. Oh yeah right there you can tell. I mean the ball changed directions. So they're going to try and sort it out. They're calling him out. Oh my goodness. Uh, Brad might lose it on this. Well, he's got to get there. Maybe oh, he's going to get kicked out of the game. Mickey's going to lose it too. Oh, and I don't blame the big fella. Well, somebody's got to go get Mickey. Oh, that's just not right. That is just not right. But apparently nobody had a clear look at that, and Cabrera is really upset. The crew chief is Mike Everett, the third base umpire. And now there he goes. Cabrera's been ejected from the game, and you knew this was about to happen. Well, Miggy was kicked out by the first base umpire. Yeah, that's Tim Timmons. So Brad could not get out there and save Cabrera. He's been ejected, and I, I just can't blame Miggy. He is just upset. The Indians get a huge break. Not only do they get the out, but Cabrera's thrown out of the game.
there is Howie Kendrick. He has a single and a double and takes a strike. He is grounded out, struck out twice, grounded out again. Two for six. And now Dave Roberts coming out and has a lot to say to the plate umpire. Pat Holberg, the plate umpire, 0 and 1 the count. Holberg has been an umpire since 2009. He lives in Iowa. Here's the pitch that Kendrick called a strike. Dave screaming at the top of his lungs about the pitch being low. 0 and 1 the count. Now you run out on the field and argue about a pitch, you're kicked out of the game. I didn't see Holberg make any gesture, but Dave knows it. As soon as you come out, you can appeal certain things, you can talk about certain things, but you can't run out there and say to the plate umpire, that pitch was ball one. Well, he knew he was gone. Curve, and it's a strike. Coco did not like that. Yeah, Bob Melvin now. Letting the home plate umpire know, and and that's why major league hitters have a good eye, and they're going to take pitches, especially somebody who's not throwing hard. And right now, Bob Melvin is fuming. Well, two pitch, and then Coco swings at that one. He, he throws the bat out. at the umpire, yeah. and he is gone. And he just threw him out. Yeah. And Bob Melvin. So he flipped the bat, and it went. It may have hit the umpire. It came very close to the umpire, and he was immediately thrown out. Oh, now a warning has been issued. He threw behind him. Uh, you know what? You should know what's going on with the first pitch. I think, and that's what Boach wants to know. Well, why don't we issue a, a warning after that first one? When well, you throw, throw behind him, there's umpires this, in this year who have ejected guy. Oh, well, Boachy just got ejected. So he's the one who gets ejected. And the whole argument is why didn't you do it the pitch before? Brian Gorman, the crew chief over there, giving Quinn Wolcott a little help. He's posting up with Bruce Bochy. Well, Chip Hale has been ejected by plate umpire Quinn Wolcott during our break there as he went to the mound to go get Patrick Corbin. Chip started barking, walking back into the dugout, and you can see the plate up right there. Runs him, and Chip Hale is hot. He really wanted candy. That strike call on that backdoor slider that should have had Patrick Corbin out of the inning. It was there. According to Fox Tracks, it was a strike. Well, sometimes the umpires just have to have. A little bit more latitude on well, especially when they miss a call. There's been a lot of barking from the Diamondback dugout throughout the ball game. Those two have been going back and forth all night long. Yep. Not to defend what Quinn Walcott did there. He missed the call clearly, but this has been ongoing now for five innings. Kimbrell freak uh, play to shagging balls in he's, the outfield. He's gonna have knee surgery, it sounds like, right? Like so she coming out now to have a word with Tim Timmons after that last pitch. Well, I think the check swing and Escobar may have said something. Now we see the uh, crew chief Mike Everett talking to him. I don't know. Was, did uh, he get thrown out? That's what I was just going to say. I kind of get the feeling he did. Yeah, I think it was the, he thought the check swing there. And Gia Vitello, the birthday boy in the game now, will move the team over to third. Johnny Gia Vitello to second. Yeah. 
Well, he, he looked. What happened there with Escobar? He looked over at the third base umpire to see, and then he gets thrown out, saying something. He thought he went, Chris Davis, on that swing, and see right here. Yeah, he went. There's, there's, yeah, he crossed the plate there. And home plate umpire Tim Timmons throws out, you know, Escobar. Escobar, I don't know what he was scribbling uh, after that check swing, but he was down uh, using his finger, uh, scribbling something on the infield dirt. So he's been ejected. 3 2. It is low. Oh, a late call, strike three. Alonzo can't believe it. Takes off his helmet, and now he's been ejected by Mark Wegner. And the conversation gets heated, and Bob Melvin's going to join in. And now Bob Melvin is gone. Alonzo being pushed back by the ace skipper, and now after Melvin's been ejected, he's going to get his money's worth. Back in the 60s, Frank Robinson at Yankee Stadium disappeared after catching a ball. That strike three call and don't make it tossed. He pounded the bat on the ground. Second straight and he has been tossed. And your manager's going to go with him. Dana Demuth is the crew chief. He's walking down from first base. Well, you knew that was chief. coming. Yeah. Well, Brandon Bell has been one of the leaders in the National League in getting walks. Showing a great knowledge of the strike zone this year. And he gets called out for the second time in a row on a pitch that he thought was ball four. Well, I don't, I've never, in the years that Brandon Belt has been in the big league, seen him react like that. And you know, he's just tired of it. And I think that's got to be the first time he's ever been ejected. Ever, ever. We've never seen it. We're back at Great American Ballpark and you're looking live at Brian Price getting his money's worth. While we were away in commercial, he was tossed out of this game by Quinn Wolcott. Seemingly still arguing the non foul ball call or the foul ball call against Jonathan Lucroy who on the next pitch hit it out of the ballpark. Price. As you look at the ejection, Wolcott had heard enough. And he will go to the clubhouse, and Jim Riggleman there on his left will manage the rest of this game. And let's take you back if you're just picking up the game. It was Jonathan Lucroy at the plate. You judge for yourself. We don't think he fouled that ball off. It would have been strike three. Strike three. Next pitch, two run home run. Oh, somebody's been ejected. Paul Emmel getting some uh, conversation from the uh, Rockies dugout. And he has just ejected someone. I don't know if it's Walt Weiss or who might have said something. But uh, they're very particular, and you really can't say anything about balls and strikes. So Walt Weiss out there trying to get some uh, clarification. Well, it goes back to, I mean, the, the Rockies weren't a big fan of the strike zone. You think about uh, Charlie Blackman and Arenado on a couple of different pitches. That's going to get your dugout chirping. And then the first close pitch that you don't get, here goes. So an ejection. Two-fiver. Mr. Doyle 
shown the door. Well, Blake Doyle. Well, he's taking up for his hitters. Blake Doyle, and he has been uh, asked uh, in no uncertain terms to depart by Paul Immel. For Braun, lifetime, and hit him. Oh, wait a second. Francisco Cervelli believes he was in fair territory when that hit him. Well, it was awfully close to being in fair territory, that's for sure. Wow. Somebody just got thrown out. I think it was Hurdle. That didn't take long. Sam Holbrook didn't give Hurdle more than a couple seconds. And Clint Hurdle apparently has been ejected after it looked as though Braun hit that ball and it came up in fair territory. And uh, the Pirates reacted maybe to Cervelli, who, who pointed toward the dugout. <laughs> he had one foot. I mean, he's in fair territory. There's no doubt. I mean, he's clear in fair as territory. day there. Then Hurdle gets ejected. Started down the line here. Watch him head toward third. Now he has to try to run around Ibar, and that's where the interference was called. And I think A.J. Pruszynski got thrown out of the game. He had a dismissive wave of his mask, and you could see Muchlinski pointing interference right there. So A.J. Pruszynski made his way to the Braves' dugout. I think he's been kicked out of the game. And Anthony Recker is going to have to come out and finish this one behind the plate. It's going to be a two run scoring single by Hundley. The umpire is explaining to Ibar why the interference call was made. Eric didn't see him coming. He was going, he was thinking about the baseball. And AJ still having a long distance conversation with Mike Winters. Uh oh, that was a magic word. Game, let alone back to back. That's why we couldn't remember it. Got him. Pagan's not happy with Joe West, and he better be careful. He threw him out. Tried to tell him. Well, that's a problem. That means you're going to have a catcher play in left field. Giants have one extra man left on the bench, and that's Trevor Brown. Now, he's played some outfield in his career. I believe his career, yeah, you know, we're talking about in, in college. I don't know if he's played professionally in the outfield. Might be able to put Belt out in left field, maybe Posey at first base or Brown at first base. But it definitely shakes up the defense. Well, it's definitely a pitcher strike. But it's not like we haven't seen a call before. Well, Larry Bow was not happy by that strike call, and he wasn't happy about a few calls earlier where Zach Eflin was on the mound. In particular, the first inning when they thought they had real Muto struck out, and then he wound up doubling the left field. So Boa has been ejected from this ball game. You had the feeling that somebody was going to go, particularly after that first inning, after some of those pitches. He's just <laughs> fooling around right now. Do, do, do. Life. Chase Anderson has a one, two, three, fifth inning. While we were away, this happened. Uh, David Freeze is ejected by home plate umpire Marty Foster. 
he tosses him. He was at the dugout and then he came out and all we could see Freeze see he was he's I was standing right here is kind of what Freeze said. And as David Freeze gets tossed or maybe saying something or Foster thought he said something. He's been tossed and John Jason will take over at first. I think Freeze was trying to tell him that he was he was saying something because of what he saw on the scoreboard. That ball is hit really well to left field. And Dahl makes the catch. Or no. Oh, it's gone. That kid, did he reach over the wall? What was the name of the kid for the Yankees back in the day? Jeffrey yeah. Mayer? Oh, he's way over the fence. Come on. And I also think if you watch where, where David is, he's going to make that catch. He is going to catch that baseball. That's not going out. Yeah, I hope he gets kicked out for gloating. Not supposed to show gloat. Ow. Yeah. Terry Collins was ejected. Side of the diamond, if he can shoot one through there, the 2 2 coming. And in there for strike three, he strikes out for the third time today. He thought it was up. And out of the strike zone. That ball was up. That was more of a hanging breaking ball. Was not the pitch that Skaggs was trying to throw. And now John Farrell coming out. Make sure Dustin Pedroia stays in the contest. And as he separates. Oh, now John Farrell has been tossed out. And Dustin Pedroia is going to walk away. So Gabe Morales has heard enough and he has thrown out the Red Sox manager. He heard enough quickly, didn't he? And it didn't take long. John Farrell may be looking for a way to fire up his team a little bit in a scoreless game halfway through a, a rough road trip so far. Joe West urging him to leave the diamond. So Dustin Pedroia gets rung up for the third time today. He stays in, but John Farrell will head for his office. I think you're right. There's a lot to that. Trying to get his his team fired up a little bit here. 